Welcome to Deep Thought. Being happy. You know what? I was I was thinking about that happiness and uh part of it's and let me shout out Warren Lance. He did a video on this as well. That uh you know that brother's like real deep. And I was thinking about that because I've seen a lot of people just over the years looking for happiness, right? And that's that's myself included. We we all look for it. But the only problem is as a culture, we look for it outside of ourselves. You know, we think if we make a certain amount of money, we'll be happy. We think if we get that article of clothing, we'll be happy. We think if we get that mate, we'll be happy. Or, you know, any material thing. We think if, okay, if we're living in this apartment or something, we'll, ha- we'll be happy. So what happens is we pursue it. We're constantly pursuing happiness, Right. We're constantly looking for that thing that can make us happy. I mean, even some people getting on drugs, they're looking for a certain amount of joy, pleasure. But it never seems to work. We never seems to work. I'm going to tell you why. Real happiness comes from within. And the only way to be happy is to cultivate it from within, to cultivate a sense of peace within you. Because if, you, if you're dependent on something outside of yourself to make you happy, what happens when that thing disappears? I'm going to tell you what. I'm going I'm going, I'm going to tell a story. Right? Um, I remember when I was a freshman in college. And I was going to St. Joseph's in uh, Philadelphia. Right? I remember I came in as a freshman and I was, man, I, I was fly. <laughs> I was fly. You couldn't, I mean, I was wearing neckties to class. You know, everybody else wearing the first three things they stepped on or sweatshirts, t shirts. No, I'm going to class with a pressed white shirt and a necktie. I mean, one of the first things I did when I got to school. One of the first things I did was get to know uh, was get to uh, know the regular uh, dry cleaners on a regular basis, and they must have thought something like, "Man, this 18 year old kid coming in here always got to get his shirts pressed just right." You know, hate the shoe shine kid, everything. I, I was I was thorough. <laughs> I was thorough. In fact, I even got some uh, young girls that way because they say, "You don't dress like these Philly boys." <laughs> Right. But and I'll never forget because I was living in an off camp. It was a campus owned apartment. And I was, so I was living off campus. Um, they didn't have room on campus at the time. And so I'm, I'm chilling. Right. I'm chilling in my apartment and, had, you know, I had some roommates, all of that. Right. But then one night I remember I never forget there was knocks on the door. It was real late. Right. And I kind of rolled over expecting my roommate to get it, right? I was like, man, go, man you can go get that damn thing, man. I don't want to deal with that, right? But it kept knocking. And then I heard the word fire. And I'll never forget that. I walked out of there. I walked out of there. I didn't even have shoes. I was walking out. In, I got out in bare feet. I didn't even have shoes. And I just got out. All I had was pajamas. I had to borrow, I had to borrow like some sweats and a jacket from, ironically, a dude, me and him are real cool now. Me and him are real, we got to be very great friends, but, but that dude was a good Christian because he, we didn't like each other at the time. <laughs> but that dude, that, 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 that dude showed some real spirituality there because that dude let me borrow some, um. let me borrow some uh, basketball shoes, some sweats and a jacket Right. And it was a letter jacket, too. It was, it was like a high school letter jacket, too. And I think that's why me and him like are very good friends now. He, he's one of the best people you ever want to know, because that dude could have been like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> right. And I just wanted to share that little part, because that to me, that's the real meaning of spirituality. Right. That's the real meaning of spirituality. You know, we talking a letter jacket. That means that's something he earned. But anyway, right, I had to borrow that from him just to get home, right? I had to have my grandmother. She sent me some money through uh, Western Union to uh, take an Amtrak home, you know? 
And I always re- I always remember that because I'm I'm sitting on the Amtrak and I ain't gonna lie, I was balled up. I was balled up because basically all that material stuff, all that material stuff that I was using, I was leaning on as a crutch to make me happy or make me feel like I was the man, just went up in flames. Just like that, like poof, right? And I'm I'm sharing that because what what happens? What happens if you okay, you think, okay, once I get this. You know, you got some women think, okay, once I get this man who's six foot four and he's muscular and he's doing all this, I'm going to be happy. Right. And they'll get him and, you know, they'll tell themselves they they're happy. But then after a while, even if the guy's treating them right, they're like, they still not happy. They still not happy. Or if they get this certain job or if they start making this money and they'll do it and they still not happy because it was a thing. Right now, I didn't have the spiritual lesson back then. I didn't know that. Right. But I mean, and, you know, some people were messed up by that fire to the point. I mean, if I wanted to, if I wanted to, I could have just told like when I was taking the uh, finals, I could have just told a teacher. I could have just said, you know what? I'm still traumatized by this. Right. And to be honest, I really I really wasn't. It, it was more, you know, it, 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 except for that initial day or two i was kind of cool you know and plus got a lot of money uh insurance i was like oh yeah i had a big tv in there and everything because <laughs> uh the building burned down to the ground building burned down in fact if i would have traveled to philly now um it's probably like a big space i don't think they ever like covered that space up i think they just paved it over and stuff So, I mean, but the point is, the point is that you cannot look outside of yourself. You know, happiness, you got to be able to cultivate happy wherever. And that's, to me, that's a spiritual master. That person that can be just wherever and just be at peace, just be happy. Like, um, I remember I was driving through Baltimore. And anybody who's not from Baltimore, if you ever want to have an idea of what it looked like, that... um, that TV show, The Wire, they didn't have to build any sets. <laughs> they they were they were shooting on location. They they actually had stuff like that. There wasn't anything fake. All they had to do was just make sure. In fact, one episode I saw a rat running across. It was, it was probably they just said, "Look, just keep rolling." <laughs> right. But I remember I was driving through that part of Baltimore one time, and I never forget. I saw this young man. He was sitting in like a lawn chair outside, and he was just chilling. He was finding his happiness. Another time I was driving through, there was like, um, it was some women and some little kids. And they all had on swimsuits. And they had their little, they had like one of those little pools and stuff just right out on the sidewalk and stuff. And they were just having a good time. Sometimes you got to get to the point where your happiness is just dependent, is just a state of being. You you gotta you gotta be just on a state of being with that, right? Where you can be anywhere and be comfortable. You can be in any situation and you still, you know what? Like uh, like you get some people that they poor. Like you you have some people they might have grown up poor, but they say, you know what, we were happy. They ain't even really realize they were poor. That 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 was a gift right there. They didn't even realize it because they were just like, you know, their happiness wasn't dependent on them having the latest clothes or TVs or material stuff. And that's when you really make it. Now, it's not to say you don't want to get those things. You know, you know, when I get around to getting another car, when I get get around to getting another car, I'm not getting it for happiness. I'm just getting it because I'll probably need it if I want to even get one because the car I got now I'm good with. So it gets me where I need to go and I can travel a distance with it. Right. But that's happiness right there where you can be in a situation. You just like, you know, I'm good with this. Right. You know, it's not dependent on having something or looking outside myself because your stuff can burn down. You know, that mate can leave. That mate can leave any time you, you go, you, you know, you find out that mate's cheating. So you put your happiness in that person's hands. Or even like on social media, you get people get upset if somebody don't like their pics or something. It was like, well, you put your happiness in other people's hands. Your happiness is you. 
You know, I was telling somebody that when I when I put up these videos, podcasts, I don't count. I, I do not count likes. I never I've never counted likes. Once in a blue moon, I'll look I'll look at thumbs down. Honestly, I'll look at thumbs down just as really that that that'll catch my attention if it's more than 10 because it's rare I get more than five on any video. Right. And even then, I'm like, I'm not sad or anything. I'm just like, huh? because my happiness is coming from doing what I do. It's not dependent on whether people like it or comment or whatever. Though I appreciate comments on videos, I appreciate likes, I appreciate shares. You know, I'll, I'll be just as happy if it doesn't. I'll be just as happy. I won't be like, oh, man, they didn't like this video. I'm like, I'm still happy anyway. I said what I needed to say, you know, got my point out, and that's all. Because it can't be dependent on other people. Because if, you're, if your happiness is dependent on things outside of yourself, you're going to be depressed. You going you you will spend the rest of your life depressed because that means it's dependent on what other people do, you know. Like one of the most spiritual people I knew was this Puerto Rican drug dealer, and he he, he said he said you know what a party is just you and your buddies sitting around smoking up some smoking a pot, you know, smoking some pot, but that's part of being happy. It's not the pot, <laughs> but just chilling. Just chilling, you know? Some of the happiest moments for me is just being sitting in the park and just chilling. Because it's not dependent on having that other person. If you're looking for that if you're looking for that other person, if you're looking for that material good, like I say, you'll never be happy. See, once you can cultivate happiness, once you can cultivate happiness within, nothing outside of you can disturb your peace. Boom. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace and many blessings.